we have ridiculous expertise in the house right now. Honor of uh, the late and great Nick Harris. I'm announcing him right now. Known him for a while. We've known. We we'll go back almost we'll go over a decade, over a decade now, now, right? Yeah. Over a decade. And this guy is one of the sharpest, most creative entrepreneurs I know. Mm -hmm. And and he's not even a roofer. He knows if I put a hammer in this guy's hand, bad things are going to happen. It'd be funny though. People are going to get hurt. Yeah. Yeah. This guy has been building websites mm -hmm. since he was in diapers. Yeah. And he has built some of the sickest websites and has some of the Best content I've ever yeah. seen. Thank you. But once again, this is the Star yeah. Grow Show. We're not we're not here to sell. I'm not even going to tell you the name of his company. Yeah. But you're yeah. here to promote entrepreneurship and to tell that entrepreneurial story. Yeah. And we're going to tell that story because this guy not only is he a marketing guru mm -hmm. and does he own one of the baddest market marketing agencies in the country, he's also a musician. Mm -hmm. Try to so start there. <laughs> this dude, Andrew Tuzon. What's hey, up, man? Thanks for joining us, man. Thank you guys for having us. What's up, man? Music is. Yeah. I wish I had more time to do it. Like mm -hmm. that, that was just, yeah. like a huge era of my life. Um, that's how you and I met. Yeah. Uh, so, how did you guys meet? I mean, oh, so, my association. Yeah, <laughs> band, back from college. Uh, that's what got me to Colorado. Was I joined that band, yeah. and uh, it did very well. Like we, we ended up doing a couple sure. summers on the Warp Tour. Uh, we I had like some, some awesome sales. We were on the road like yeah. so much out of the year, uh, playing really good, like a lot of good opportunities yeah. just like fell into our lives. What kind of music? Uh, it was back during like the pop punk era, right? Okay. So it's like circa 2003, 4, so like Starting Line, yeah. Simple Plan, all those bands in the world. New Found Glory. Oh, yeah. yeah. Man. I was, I was awesome. like, that's awesome. awesome. yeah. awesome. yeah. We had yeah. a blast, man. It was a good yeah. time. Um, but that's honestly where I learned and fell in love with marketing. Yeah. Right? I've been developing websites since I was 15. Um, and that I just kind of like accidentally encountered that and fell into it. Mm -hmm. But I learned marketing because on the road playing music, if we didn't sell albums, we didn't eat. Like it was literally do or die when you're out on the road. If you're out in Chattanooga, Tennessee, and uh, this this was not like the era we have now where we can move money around and have access to stuff like like as easily as we do now, right? Like we were yeah. literally showing up to a city, going straight to the mall with our discmans and our headphones. And walking around to kids, ex ex introducing ourselves, explaining that, like, hey, we're not going to hurt you, first of all. Uh, we want, you, we want <laughs> right? you to listen to our album. A bunch of creepy tattoos. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. We want you to listen to our album, and if you like it, like, we're on tour, buy an album, buy a t-shirt, support yeah. us, it'd be great. Yeah. And that was what, how we spent our days before we go to the venue to do sound check and play our shows. Yeah. But that's actually how we funded, in the early days before we were signed, that's how we funded everything on those tours. Yeah. Uh, but that's where we learned guerrilla tactics. Uh, my CMO and I, when him and I played into a band after uh, the band that you knew, and we did the exact same thing. And the concepts and methodologies that we learned about guerrilla marketing, we still employ at our agency on the daily, yeah. every single day for our clients, whether it's like PR, uh, guerrilla marketing, uh, street team stuff. We still do stuff in the yeah. music industry. Uh, I like guerrilla marketing. Cool. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Guerrilla yeah. marketing is pretty cool. And you know, we call this, and, yeah. and uh, <clears throat> got to give a shout out to my dude, Gary Vaynerchuk. Yeah. You guys may know him, but you may not always, know him, that yes, guy. Yeah, right. So yeah. here's the thing. I, I was able to interact with Gary, right? Yeah. And, and we were at a big conference, and I was able to ask him some questions and, and ask him how to promote my book, got a book here, and that sort of thing. And you know what his answer was? Especially because I'm just a nobody. I'm just a guy that's just trying to come up and create a brand and you know sell a book. I don't have a right. name like Gary B. I don't have millions of followers. Sure. I asked him, how do I do this? How do I build a brand? How do I sell my book? Mm -hmm. Right. He said hand to hand combat. Hand to hand yeah. combat. Yeah. That's what it's all about. Dude, that's it, guerrilla it marketing. Yeah. That's hand to hand well, combat. That's, that's what it's all about. That's what got us the opportunities that we had yeah. when we were playing music. I mean, yeah. the yeah. way that we got onto the Warp Tour was brute forcing our way into there in person, like making sure. Like, I called Kevin Lyman's office every day for six months until he randomly answered the phone. Yes. And I didn't know what to do. That's awesome. I was, you're I was, shocked. You're I was shocked. so used to yeah, getting his shocked. voicemail yeah. that when I finally got him on the phone, I was like, oh, my gosh. Yeah. Right? Yeah, right. Uh, uh, but uh, when, we, when we started talking and then, like, like, he invited us out to work to her, not even to play, but just yeah. to come network and meet and chat, that morning we showed up and we checked in. We're like, hey, mm -hmm. we're here. Uh, you know, it's CBA. We're here to meet uh, Kevin Lyman. Mm -hmm. And on the radio, he's like, oh, CBA's here. Cool. Ask him if they want to play today. We're like, 
Okay, cool. And then we ended up talking in the afternoon. That's when he said, "Come, come with us this summer. Like, let's go." Let's it took six it. months of phone calls to get just that. blowing them up. Boom, boom, boom. But boom. it's just like you said, hand to hand combat. Like, yeah. Without that tenacity, <laughs> like, it, it I completely matter. agree. Like, you know, people think that the marketing is magic, right? right? It's great, but like, you still need to deal with some kind of traction, especially in the beginning, right? When you're trying mm-hmm. to earn your opportunities. I don't care if it's digital doors or if you're actually knocking doors, you're doing phone calls, whatever it is. You need to get that traction yeah. going, right? Get people to know who you actually are and then start, you know, implementing a lot of those marketing. I think the efforts. problem is so many people look at marketing and advertising methodologies yeah. as like the end game, yeah. right? Or, yeah. or, or, or the be all, where right. it's like they look at it as replacement as opposed to supplement. You can't do that. Exactly. It needs to be supplement, like door to door, door knocking, yeah. relationship business, repeat referral, shaking hands, yeah. the relationship side of things. That never goes away. Yeah. I don't care how good our automation yeah. tools get. I don't care how good your creative is. That never goes away. Yeah. Advertising methodologies are built to help reinforce and supplement yeah. and give you more opportunity to have both conversations that you would not have had otherwise. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. So that's, I mean, it's, it's, it's so important to, so to important. know that and most people get that twisted. Yeah. I think that's where people get, get let down from an expectation standpoint. Yeah. People buy from people. Mm-hmm. People they like, know, and trust. Why do we work like, together? Trust. Absolutely. Why do you we know? work together? All, all three of us. We, we have like each other. I like, we We're like each other. Sharp guy. Yeah. yeah. You know? Exactly. Like that's the whole. From there. Yeah, I, I love, love the statement. We'll throw it on there, man. Hashtag it. Empires mm-hmm. are built one relationship at a time. Mm-hmm. I believe that. Like, you got to think big, but you also got to understand what it takes to get there. And it's relationship after relationship after relationship. Totally. And it, it, the old adage, right? Since the Rockefeller days, mm-hmm. you know, it, it, it's all about who you know. Yeah. So that is, it's true. I got know a question for you guys. I got, I got a question for you guys then. Okay. Yeah. So, what about the person who's starting out, right? startup and obviously the funds aren't there and you only have a certain amount of time of oxygen, right? Of cash flow until you're done. But I'm a big believer in that long term relationship when you're starting that business. What advice do you have for someone like that to get some cash flow going but also work on building out those long term relationships for long term bigger success? From a cash flow standpoint, yeah. you gotta grind. You gotta grind and you yeah. gotta make the jump when it makes sense. Yeah. When I started my first agency, in hindsight, I probably wasn't prepared. I had yeah. 10 grand in the bank yeah. um, and I had two kids on the ground, we had a mortgage, and I jumped. Um, I probably should have saved up more capital. Now, the, the flip to that is I, if I'm ever going to hedge my bets, I'm always going to bet on myself because I know my work ethic. And yeah. I worked my ass off to build relationships and sell what I do and mm-hmm. get cash flow uh, to, a, to a healthy standpoint quickly, right? But I think that you need to make sure that you have uh, either somebody in place that can fund you, whether it's a family member um, or somebody that you can borrow money from mm-hmm. or save up money so that you, you're not stressed out. Because mm-hmm. we all know the age-old saying of desperation is a stinky cologne. Yeah, everybody's right? not. Right? Everybody everybody not. All so you have to make sure that like you have a backup. Yeah. Not a plan B, don't get it twisted, but you have money to back up what you're doing. Mm-hmm. You have money set aside to make sure that it's not if you have a down month, it's when you have a down month. Yep. You're, you're, you're oh, not yeah. looking at pulling on your line of credit to max. You're not looking at not being able to make payroll. You're not looking at how do I pay my mortgage. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you have to have that support system in place to make sure that you can keep running. Because so many companies die not because they couldn't sell the product or service. I mean, that happens. Mm-hmm. But from a cash flow standpoint, there's, there's companies that are doing well from a sales standpoint, but maybe it's their billing cycle that's killing them. Maybe their sales cycle is too long and they don't have the cash flow or liquidity to keep the doors open until they can get to that next close. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So having that cash in the bank is huge. Yeah. And, and that, I mean, <clears throat> there's obviously a lot of... <clears throat> There's a lot of obviously a lot of roofing stuff that we talk about, right? Yeah, roofing. Right. We, we talked about today. We did a, I did a whole course on cash flow management. Mm-hmm. And man, it's the hardest thing to do as roofers. I, I'm sure that there's a lot of roofers watching. Mm-hmm. I'm sure we probably have some interaction. Yeah. We can already say hi to some guys. Uh, but cash flow is one of the biggest challenge and, and one of the biggest things that hold roofers back. Yeah. yeah. I so, think it holds us back as entrepreneurs. Yeah. 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 Cash flow management sucks. Do you, do you have any suggestions really for you know those people? You know, you guys are, you know, well-oiled entrepreneurs, right? You guys have been in the game for a long, long time, and you've experienced a lot of things. What about the person that's not used to that kind of pressure, that kind of success? Do you have any advice for them to make sure that they don't, you know, freak out or panic when they're in that situation? Say, cool, cool, calm, and collected. I guess I would say. Well, first, I mean, just like from 
perception is reality. Yeah. We're the only people, like, you, you're you the only one that can control how you react to something, Good right? Point. Yeah. So having, developing that level of control over, mm-hmm. over, over how you react to situations is huge. Yeah. Um, and on a more practical execution standpoint, I would say find and develop a relationship mm-hmm. Alfred Beer and pick his brain. That's it. My CFO, that's how we started. Yeah. Um, I met him. We developed a relationship. We, we drank a, a ton of beer together and yeah. became good friends. And yeah. now he's, he's still our CFO. And it was just through those early stages mm-hmm. you know, of my agency, asking the right questions, developing a relationship and the friendship yeah. there. So then it, it was it was okay for me to shoot him a text and say, hey, mm-hmm. am, am I really in the right with this LLC incorporation or should I be looking at, at, at a different call, direction? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And because of the relationship, he gives me the feedback that I need at the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, obviously, now he's, he's you know, we, we pay him for what he does. Right, um, right. But in the early in the early stages, you know, we, we, it was all relationship focused. Yeah. You know? um, the other option would be trade. Right, we've yeah. done a lot of that in the early stages. Is you know, I'm I'm very skilled with web development and advertising. Okay, mm-hmm. and my my staff is far more talented than I ever will be. Mm-hmm. Right? We surround ourselves with with the best of the best. So I've got something that he needs and wants. Mm-hmm. He has something that I need and want. So mm-hmm. what if we could negotiate a trade? What if for um, you know x amount of hours of you helping me with my books every month, mm-hmm. um, we will do. A yeah. web development project for you. It will help you with advertising mm-hmm. methodology X Y Z. Yeah, um, good call. So you you can do those types of barter and trades when you're yeah. in the early stages to help overcome the hey I can't pay you right now, but I can sweat equity. Yeah, right? I I can in kind of yeah. exactly. Yeah, um, that was huge for us in, in the early yeah. stages. So what about uh, kind of similar to what I was just asking you guys? What is there any correlation between? Becoming like friends with the client and the, set, the success that you guys see, maybe you know it's gained trust, and you guys are kind of working together more as a partnership. It, it, do you see any correlation between totally. those? Totally. I mean, when we're interviewing a new client, when we're prospect, I mean, let me start that over. When yeah. we're prospecting a new client at the agency, mm-hmm. we're actually interviewing. Them, right? Yeah. Just as much as they're interviewing us. Yeah. Because what we're looking for there are what we call baseline synergies. Okay. Oh, okay. Um, okay. We're that trying cool. to yeah, make yeah. sure that we're going to be able to get along with this person or these people. We're trying to make sure that they're a good fit for us. Yeah. We're essentially screening them for, could we be friends, yeah. right? Yeah. Because if you have a spectrum of uh, want to die mm-hmm. and love life, yeah. we try to stay away from this over here, <laughs> yeah. okay? Yeah. And so what drives that, that spectrum is client synergy. Yeah. So if you're able to have a good relationship, enjoy what you're doing, but who you're doing it with and for, Huge. that's when you see alcohol. Oh like my gosh, believe. yeah. So we try to make sure that during that screening process, we're really trying to dial in. Yeah. Are you a good fit? Yeah. Now, we've been fortunate enough to get to the point where we can walk away from deals if it's not a good fit. In the early days, we had to take, you do that. We had to take everything. Yeah. Because we, we needed the money, mm-hmm. right? But now we've gotten to the point, and it's not an ego thing, no. right? It's like, mm-hmm. hey, it's a strategy. this probably isn't a good fit, but yeah. here's somebody that we can recommend you to mm-hmm. that would be able to handle your project. Yeah. Uh, same, same thing in roofing. It is, is You get to a point, like when you first start out in roofing, where mm-hmm. it, it's, oh, you have a need? Oh, yeah, I'm in. Let's do it. Let's yeah. do it. I'll, I'll take everything you could possibly get. Oh, you want me to build you a fence? Great. I'll build you a fence. Oh, right. you want me to fix your driveway? Great. Let's do a driveway. Mm-hmm. Because, like, you, you just want that work. You're, you're willing to take everything. Right. But once you get to a certain point, you kind of get your systems dialed in. You actually figure out that, Okay, if I can master one thing and be really, really good at that one thing, I can I can actually build a brand, build a business out of that. Yeah. And once you create that staple and you create that baseline of, of what your core business is, yeah. be really good at that. Right. Mm-hmm. And then start adding. Right. People yeah. will try to add too fast. Well, they try to do everything. I agree. And and not you know, and not just focus on the one thing. Right? People try to be everything to everyone. Yeah, yeah, and you need to be. That's human nature, right? Right, Please everybody. Well, we're people much. pleasers. Yeah. We are. Right. We need to focus on being damn good at like one thing for a specific group of people, mm. right? Yeah. Understand what your deliverables are and who you're servicing. Target mm. market and your deliverables. Those two things go hand in hand. Yeah. Uh, and but, here's here's the thing. We were, and, and, and I, I always obviously roofing is my background, so we talk about that. But 
when it comes to roofing and, mm. and, and hail damage and insurance claims and working, working those sort of projects, yeah. we're at the point now where we will turn down clients that like they're hell bent on. I want one company. I want a general contractor to do all the work. Yeah. And, and I think it's a, it's a fallacy and it's just a matter of education mm -hmm. because consumers don't realize that it, it's really difficult to be really good at roofing, really good at siding, really good at paint, really good at, you know, uh, uh, gutters and all the other components that go with the full hail claim. But a homeowner just wants the path of least, least resistance and roofers are like, yeah, I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. Yeah. Sure. You want everything done? I'll be that guy. I'll do it. And what happens is they get the roof done. Yeah. And everything else gets pushed aside. They can't find subcontractors. They can't find a, a painter to go paint one wall. They can't find someone to go install one window. Mm -hmm. mm. But, but us as roofers are too scared to like own that and be like, no, this is what really needs to happen because we want to be really good at roofing. Totally. So you get to a point where we actually turn those down. We probably, yeah. people probably freak out. Like we literally will turn down those clients, but we're definitely going to do our best to try to educate them first. Right. Yeah. Because if you can educate them, like this is why we don't do that. It's amazing how clients will end up. Oh, that, that makes sense. Yeah. I respect right. that. Well, the average response is respect. Yeah. Right. And now like, everyone else you're is the saying only roofer. Right. Everyone else is taking the job. You're the only roofer that showed up at my door that came into my coffee table and shot me straight. Right. Yeah. That yeah. You told me like trust. it was. Immediate, exactly. Immediate trust. Well, I think it's and then you walk out support. of there with with a roofing contract, and you're probably going to be able to give them some recommendations for everything. Oh, yeah. Right. You can yeah. assist them, guide them, tell them what to do, give them a list of subcontractors that you that you know clients have worked with or whatever. Right. Just go on Google and find yeah. the highest rated people, yeah. make a list and give it to them, right? Yeah. If you had to. I mean we actually have like a like a list of subcontractors that we work with that we vet and we try to try to try to just we literally just give their information away. Yeah. Because we want to be the best roofer we can be. Yeah. We want to just dominate roofing. Yeah. All aspects. Right. Do you develop, do you develop do. relationships with these other companies that do these other things? Absolutely. I work with them. Right. Programs, 100%. Programs. Yes. Yeah. Good. We're working on that. We're, we're synced up. Like, I will actually consult with companies. Yeah. Like, I'll go in and consult with the owners. Or we'll, we'll sync up together and be like, hey, how do we build a business model that works? Mm -hmm. Like, I'll help you with that. Mm -hmm. And we'll, we'll even sync up our software and it, it, it creates a great synergy. Right. We're working That's on that. Great. It's a kind of a new concept. Right. And I'm giving away all my secrets again. Here I go. I it's do it again. Brilliant, though, yeah. But it's, it's brilliant, right? Yeah. Is 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 collaboration. Mm. And I got to a point. We we do a lot of volume, right? We'll probably do a thousand roofs this year. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a lot of opportunity to do paint and siding and all that. And it seems it, it's hard to just turn that away. Instead of just turning it away, now you actually try to actually find a like. There's two options. One figure out how to do it myself. Mm. And we've been trying that for years. You've been trying that for years. And none of us are good at, good at it. I'm sorry. It's true. Mm. Sure. We're roofers. We're not good at siding and painting all the other bullcrap. Right. Yeah. So the next option is to either buy your own, buy a separate company or start a separate company or find a separate company that syncs up with your company's culture, your right. company's values. Right. And boom, now you can capture both audiences. But right. when you make a recommendation, that crushes too, and you know you can control That's the quality. Thing, yeah. Now you're, you're, the likelihood of you spitting a referral mm -hmm. goes through the roof because now you're the hero. Yeah. Right? And but oh, what yeah. does this all circle back to? Mm -hmm. Relationship. Right. Relationships and partnerships. Right. Man, it's crazy. Right. Yeah. When we're working with subcontractors that do painting and siding, you better believe they'll probably be guests on the show. Yeah. Because we're friends. We're close. Like we, we we're trying to build together. each other. Up. We try to help each other build yeah. our businesses. And, and, and make it happen. It starts with sales. The bottom line sales guys, it's about relationships. Mm -hmm. Executive level, it's about relationships. Yeah. Entrepreneurship is about relationships. Yeah, relationships. But what's, what's tough about it, I think, when you first get into entrepreneurship is like you're so competitive, right? You're so focused on helping yourself and make sure you grow your business and you don't die, right? Mm -hmm. That you forget about like the common sense stuff. Hey, you know, when did I have the best results in my life, no matter what the stage of my life? Right. It's when I collaborated with others. There's like a certain synergy and a level of performance that just happens when you guys become a team, right? And there's like a team goal that you guys are trying to achieve. Yeah. It, it's crazy the energy that comes from that, yeah. you know? Kind of like you, you suggested that book, Scrum, yeah. right? And I've been reading that and like, the stuff that I pulled away was crazier than that, right? There's so many things where it's like based off individual performance, right? right? And that's how you get rewarded, which is great. But 
Imagine when you have that team goal uh-huh. and that team works together to hit that goal. Right. Right. Now, when you take these companies and you come together, there's like a team goal there, and right. it's pretty cool. You get right? everybody because, grinding for the same yeah. good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's great. And if you're aligning your values, right, which is I think very important. Sky's the limit. Sure, imagine. Like, the sky's the limit. Yeah. You right. know. So w- one thing I want to talk about is you know obviously everybody's heard you know what's hot right now in marketing and industry, right? Yeah. Facebook advertising, Google Ads, SEO. But the one issue that I think I see a lot in the market, in the industry, home services, construction, roofing, whatever it might be, is the lack of a of, of brand, right? Mm-hmm. Sure. And I, brand is is everything. Like, why do I buy Nikes? Why do you? How many pairs of Jordans do you own? We're not going to go. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, but why do you? But, but why, though, right? It's the brand, the uh, Jordan you're brand, you're man. Loyal. You're loyal to those days, man. If you get a, pair, a new pair of Jordans, how pumped are you? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> right. I'm like a kid in a candy store. Right. I just got the new 32s that came out. Oh. <laughs> uh, we got some comments in. Oh, dude, my bad, there. man. So maybe we should bring the lights in a little bit and, uh, and brighten it up a little bit. I guess it, it's going through, coming through on Facebook Live a little bit dark. Obviously, the camera is amazing, and it's capturing everything, mm-hmm. but uh, it's coming through dark on, on the live feed. Look how tall yeah, I am. Yeah, one, one, one. Yeah, <laughs> uh, also, man, and also, <laughs> also, Nick, uh, battery. Like, battery? Getting low. It's getting a little bit low. In, whatever, okay, all right. Adrian, what's up, man? Let's go ahead and say hi to some peeps. Adrian, hey, like, Adrian, dude, out here in Denver, man. You? We just met with you recently. Yeah, man. man. Good Thanks for joining in. Appreciate it, bud. Patrick, how you doing? Howie? Uh, hey, honey, how are you? Nice to see you, baby. Yeah. My wife's watching. Chrissy's watching. Say hi. We got Chad. What's up, Chad? <laughs> A few other people watching. That's awesome. Yeah. We got we to roll. Oh, we got to right, right, roll. Right, we got to right, get so, some content out there, man. So get one thing I want to talk about was, you know, marketing, but then breaking that down into the branding section, right? Yeah. A lot of people are talking right now, Facebook advertising, Google ads, SEO. It's great. But a lot of these guys have heard that a lot. Now, I know they've heard branding too, but like we were saying, the attachment to those J's, right? The attachment to the iPhone, that kind of stuff, that's special, right? That's special. That's long lasting, right? That's where it's like, hey, if that's not a storm this year, we're still going to survive. Right? That's what you did. That's what you've done, right? That's what we want to talk about. How do you build a brand? Because it's so long term. Where do you start? That's, I mean, branding is foundational, right? Yeah. So Facebook ads, SEO, SEM, uh, reactive, proactive advertising, all of it is an extension of the brand. Mm-hmm. None of it matters unless you've established the foundation. It's like building a house. Yep. Right? Like, none of it matters if the foundation sucks. Mm-hmm. And too many companies, people, entities, organizations, whatever, skip that step or yeah. short change or shortcut that step. And it needs to be, uh, there needs to be careful thought and planning that goes into it. It's more yep. than a logo. It's more than a color. It's more than a tagline. It's more than all of those things combined. It's, yeah. just, it's your story. And to encapsulate your entire story into a mark, it's one of the hardest damn things you'll ever try to do. But if you can figure out what makes the most sense visually yeah. to capture that feeling, then you're onto something. Yeah. The feeling is how you can capture and help tell that story. You want people to be able to look at that mark and understand exactly what they're looking at without even seeing the company name. Yeah. Apple, Nike, yeah. right? Like those, those are the ones that have done it well, where you can see the mark and you, you don't even need to see the type lock up to know who it is. Yeah. But, but it all comes through that story. But how do you have the opportunity to tell the story? Time and relationships, yeah. right? So it's not an overnight thing. It's not a hire an agency to build me a brand. I mean, that helps. Mm-hmm. Uh, we do a lot of branding and we do a lot of brand positioning statements. Yep. We do a lot of mission uh, vision statements. We do a lot of SWOT analysis. All of these things are important to know and have documented, but nothing's going to replace time and relationships, yeah. right? You have to have all of these things in place so that when you are out at a networking event and mm-hmm. somebody says, well, who are you? What do you do? What is what is Sumo? What is Roofing Academy? Mm-hmm. Well, you have that that elevator pitch. You have that like thirty second synopsis of exactly what you are, who you are, what's your differentiating factor. Why should somebody give you the time of day? Yeah. Or give you the opportunity to even build a relationship, and then that's it's good. an exponential U curve from there. Yeah, that's right? really good, man. That's how it's happening. It's, with it's like the hand to hand combat. It's, it's exactly like, what. Dude, it what is. I'm thinking right now is I'm thinking when Steve Jobs would come out on stage and present something, mm-hmm. right, and it'd be like a thousand dollars more expensive than what the market's at, and people are up clapping. Right. They're like, "Go!" Right, like, or, like when you think of Nike, you think of the fastest person alive 
running through with Nike shoes on. And you're like, yeah. holy, yeah. I want to be that person, right? You think now, all of a sudden, I got to create his own brand. Exactly. Like, I mean, that's, it. Like, yeah, that's a whole nother level. Like a stick yeah. figure of a dude <laughs> dunking a basketball. Yeah. But people have tattoos of it. Right? Yeah. One of the most iconic ones. I think, I think. If that ever happened, man, um, I could die happy man. <laughs> Let's bring that back Dude, to right now. Uh, on, yeah. What are we working on right now? Like, yeah. We're in process. We're branding. We're yeah. branding the Star Build Pro mm -hmm. Show. We're branding a book. And we're branding the Roofing Academy, right. Suma Media. Yeah. Like, there's a lot of branding happening right now. Mm -hmm. And it's it's really cool when you get to a point, like, with our roofing company, <clears throat> it, it, it's, it's humbling to get to a place yeah. where pretty much everywhere you go, if you say, hey, have you heard of this company? You, yeah, there's yeah, a good yeah. chance of them saying, oh, yeah, I've heard of you, or I've seen you, or something like that. That's a that doesn't that's, happen That's overnight. amazing. Right. Yeah, that's that amazing. does not happen overnight. Yeah. And and when it comes to, like, the roofing academy, we're, like, in, in a short period of time, this dude, these guys executing, well, that brand is already there. Like, yeah. I've already encountered people that I just met for the first time. We were already in dialogue at a roofing conference or at a roofing convention or yeah. something, talking, and they know chatting, it. connecting, whatever. And then it casually, I'm like, oh, have you heard of the Roofing Academy? Oh, yeah, I've heard of the Roofing Academy. That's a good feeling. That's, That's a, a good feeling. really good feeling. Yeah. It's really cool when when that sort of thing happens. Because, like, we already created a bond. Yeah. And he didn't even know that I'm the founder of the Roofing Academy. Yeah. He didn't know that. Yeah, and that's branding. And you know, I think that's the client that wants branding as their goal, like when you ask them, you know, what's their KPIs, how they track and stuff like that, and it's like, when they try, like, hey, I want to build a brand, I think that's the coolest thing that you can hear, right? Other than the person that might come and say, hey, how many leads can you generate for me? It's more, That's great, and that's a possibility, we can do that, but it's like, I want to build a brand that's long last. You're like, Oh man, this is gonna yeah. be a fun project. Right? Yeah, you know, like that's the ultimate way goal better to night. work with somebody that you can treat as a partner. Yeah, right. Everything we do, man, we yeah. want to be partners. Right? Yeah, there's got to be. Everybody's got to walk away from every deal feeling like they got the positive. Like it's best yeah. interest for them. Yeah, it's yeah. a win-win scenario, right? Like it's an from experience. A, from a sale yeah. to a business partnership to a to a merger totally. to whatever. It's that's how business gets done. It's, yeah. it's, again, it comes back to just the relationships. Yeah. But as we're going to probably start to close and wrap this down, yeah. I want to give you guys, I want to give you some uh, some really solid stuff for you to mm. take away right now. And we didn't even go there yet, but mm. this dude can build some of the sickest websites. Mm. It doesn't, it's ridiculous. They're amazing websites that he's built over how many years? Oh, maybe 20, 20 years. 20 years this yeah. guy's been building websites. Mm. It's crazy. Like, he was forced to do it because he didn't have any money to promote his bands and that sort of thing. So he had to build websites. Mm -hmm. And and let's go ahead and, and give our viewers some tips on building websites. Yeah. I mean, what does it take to build a website? It, if somebody wants to try to do this, yeah. try to hire somebody or try to at least right? That whole spectrum in between. It's conversion-based design. What that means is you're building a sales funnel, okay? So a user comes into the site. You have milliseconds to grab attention. You have to be able to earn somebody's, like you have to earn the opportunity to even tell your story. Mm -hmm. Somebody has, And just because somebody says, yes, I'm willing to let you tell me your story, that's where your real, your close rate starts, right? Mm -hmm. It's not your click-through rate. It's not getting them from Facebook to your web. I mean, that's super important. But your actual close rate starts when they're on your page and they're in your actual funnel, mm -hmm. your sales funnel, okay? So conversion-based design is actually walking people through the process of who you are, what you do, what's your differentiating factor, building value in your organization. Because let's face it, every industry out there, like 99% of industries out there, are saturated to all get out. So why am I going to choose you to put a roof on my house? Why am I going to choose you to build my video content, mm -hmm. right? It's mm -hmm. because... 
I buy into your differentiating factor, whether that's your background or your story, or whether that's your credibility or the work that you put in the market. Yeah. You have to be able to walk people through that process, ultimately leading them to the point of conversion. Now, here's the catch. People don't like to be sold. Right? That's why the last time you probably went and bought a car, you probably went and looked on the lot on a Sunday when they're closed because you don't want some dude knocking you on your window. That. Exactly. They want to be entertained almost, exactly. right? Exactly. Like not you, sold. You do not like to be sold. You want to experience. You want to experience. Experience is awesome. And you want to feel like as a consumer, you did your research yeah. and you went through that process of self-discovery yeah. to come to that decision on your own. Yeah. So it can't feel like sales. Right? Yeah. So it's conversion based design, but it's paired with what I call conversational sales. Right. So you're actually just explaining what you do, just like we're doing right now. Yeah. Where it's a conversation, it's not pushy, I'm not trying to push or pull you in a direction, I'm leading you yeah. through the, the education process yep. and then giving you the opportunity, should you decide, yeah. with the education on the table to take the next yeah. step. Now you have to pair that with solid visuals, responsive web design. I mean, this, this is, I'm writing a book on, on all of this right now too. I mean, I've yeah. been doing this for the last several years. I keep rewriting it because technology changes faster than I can write my book. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I guess, uh, yep. <laughs> but it's, it's a huge part of the, 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 the overall puzzle. Yeah. And again, it's just like branding, how I said that's foundational. Having a good website is also foundational. You, gone are the days of just standing up a website and then waiting for the leads to come in. Yeah. Right? You have to develop the brand, you have to build a good website, but then you have to understand the difference between proactive and reactive marketing. You have to execute simultaneously on both sides to make sure that you have outbound and inbound engagement taking place. So that way you're you're knocking doors, you're generating inbound traffic, mm. you're working on outbound traffic, you're doing all the right habits yep. that as salespeople we have to do mm. to make sure that our pipe is full. Yep. So it's like it's a multifaceted, multifaceted, multidimensional beast that you have to wrestle every single day. Yeah. But for sure, the brand and the website—that's your foundation. Yeah. That's what people pass judgment, and you could blame it on this thing, mm. right? You could blame it on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. We've all become cultured to experience this, uh, expect this certain experience online. For for good or bad, I'm not going to get on a soapbox. But we've all become ex ex uh, ex like we, we expect it. We're conditioned. Now. Exactly. Yeah. We're conditioned yeah. and we're yeah. cultured to expect that. And if we don't get it, guess what we do? This sucks. And we leave. You bounce. We bounce. Bad experience, you're gone. You're Boom. done. And, you, and now that goes with the company, right? right. Exactly. The bad experience on the website now is aligned 100%. with that company. 100%. Mm -hmm. So you have to be able to create this experience that to that create that gets people like stoked on what you're doing. To do that, you got to understand who's going to be using this thing, mm -hmm. right? If your primary target market is homeowners uh, in, in the metropolitan area that their homes are worth $500,000 or more, that's a different cadence than if somebody's selling uh, life insurance to uh, millennials who just had their first kid and they're 25 making uh, you know, entry-level job and they're making their entry-level wages, right? It's different tone, it's different cadence, it's different messaging, and understanding that will allow you to position that site and that message mm -hmm. differently. Mm -hmm. It does the same for your brand. Like knowing who you're talking to is more important yeah. than the words you're actually saying. Right. And we talked about that today yeah. when we were filming. Right. Dude, it's like it's creating like, a target audience. It's going to like Spain. Hey, it's part of the course, guys. Plug, plug, plug. You know what I mean? That is not going to yeah. be effective. You go to another language and you're not speaking their language, what, what, what's, what, no matter how valuable the content you're saying, are they hearing it? Right. Do they care? Like, no. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. So you got to understand your client. Yeah. Understand, understand your, your target client. audience. Is, yeah. That's, that's the key to all this, yeah. right? It's exactly you know, The more you can understand your target audience, the more you can understand your client, the more advantage you're going to have yeah. in yeah. building a brand right. when you're marketing. I mean, so, yeah. it's yeah. Arg it's that, that's arguably more important than your brand. It's more important than your website. It's more important than your the SEO. It, it, understanding yeah, that. Yeah, understanding that. Because that is what drives everything else. Everything is, it's, 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 the Latin saying is uh, air hoc, or post air hoc, yeah. ergo propter hoc. It means yeah. because of this, yeah. then that. Mm -hmm. And what, yep. what I mean by that is everything that you're going to do from an advertising or a methodology standpoint is a direct extension of who you're trying to connect with. Yeah. And mm -hmm. understanding that is what's now, going to direct that, everything else. That that's an amazing about. skill set, though, because what happens is we're always so trapped in our own mindset. We're always viewing everything from our own perspective, right? Yeah. And it's kind of like the salesperson that sells better to the person who has the same personality, yeah. right? You always talk about the disc assessment, right? Switching up what you are, right? If you're a D but you're dealing with an S or whatever it might be, make sure that you're aligning the way that you're speaking to them in their section, right? Not yeah. the way you'd want to respond to, right? Think about them. It's all about that end user experience, no matter what. Whether you're selling or it's on the website that's trying to do the selling for you, mm -hmm. it's all about that end user. Yeah.
Yeah. And that's where we make sure we focus our efforts. I mean, there, yeah. there's, there's yeah. degrees yeah. around user experience and user interface now. Yeah. 100% because of what you just said. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's more important now than it ever has been. And it's only going to continue to get more important. Mm -hmm. As we continue to have more technology and more devices and more ways to access information and VR and AR and all of these things that we're doing to interface with data, it's only going to become more important. Yeah. So if you're not paying attention to it now, you've already lost. Again, guys, we are talking yeah. about marketing, we're talking yeah. about branding, yep. and we're going deep. This is awesome stuff. Wake it's really Texas. funny. I know we what's got up, Julio? Watching. My buddy Julio, I'll wake up. We just say, what's up? What's The highlights of the draft for a week, you know, whatever. We'll get on it. But anyways, we'll we are going to get wrapped up because we're going to go watch the draft. Yeah. We'll probably pick another beer. Yeah. Who so, the Broncos picking? Who, who you got? I don't know, man. Yeah. It, it may have already happened, bro. Hopefully you think so? Not. I know what you just started. If, so we I think they might get Barkley. Stuff. They get Barkley. But I'm a Packer fan, big Packer fan. We need some help on defense. Let's get Rodgers some help, right? Yeah. I know he's a little moody right now. Let's get him some help. Let's get him out of the ring. He gets out of the ring, think he'll be good. Okay. goes away. Yeah, exactly. This show's not good. Winning saves everything, right? <laughs> we went from yeah. building websites Man. to the NFL draft. Yeah, guys. Well, cool, guys. I mean, thank you so much for watching. Yeah, guys. Hey, Jane, Sarah, thank you guys going? so much, guys. Justin, this was you. episode. Eight of the Start Bill Grow Show. Awesome. Andrew, man, thank no, you so thank much, you guys, man. man. This is really appreciate it, boss. Yeah, really man. appreciate hey, it. Hey, make sure. I know a lot of you are probably yeah. going to jump on after the draft and watch this thing. If you are watching this, uh, share it. Share it with share your share friends. Share it out, guys. I really appreciate it. Uh, and, and connect with us. You know, mm -hmm. we got uh, Andrew Tuzon, T U Z S O N. He nailed yeah. it, right? Hit That's him right. up online. Hit him up on Facebook, Twitter. He goes by Drew, too. Deal. Drew. Goes by Drew. Or, uh, you know, my Andrew, man. Drew. My man. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, Marvin Guru got Nick yeah. right here. Check out with him. On, and as you know, I'm Randy Brothers, Randy J Brothers online. Check out the book. Uh, it's on Amazon. And this is the Start Build Grow Show. We're excited. We're talking about entrepreneurship. We're telling the story of entrepreneurship, and we're telling it from as many angles as we can. Yeah. Thank you. Stay tuned. We'll see you next week. Go pack. Go. <laughs> go pack. Go. Yeah.